I mean, whenever I come across a hard part in the painting, I'll, I won't go to it right away. I'll kind of figure out areas around it to help inform me what to do in that tough area. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through this landscape painting that I did step by step, explaining the reasoning behind all the major decisions that I made throughout the painting. All right, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero, and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so that you can get better faster. So my favorite type of landscape painting is plein air painting, but every now and then I want to draw on, you know, my library of photos that I've taken over the years and do a painting for fun. And that's what I did here. I came across this old photo that I'd taken a few years ago at Laguna Beach. And I liked it because a lot of the composition was already there. I thought it was very easy to identify the big shapes of the composition and I didn't really need to change or manipulate anything. So the next thing I did, uh, which is kind of like a new thing that I've been doing lately, is I put the photo into photo Photoshop and I actually paint over the photo because what I'm trying to do is to simplify it and to fill in any of the gaps that the photo has. For example, if you look at all the shadows in the photo, no matter where they are depth wise, they're all pretty much the same value, which I know isn't right. Like I know that a shadow in this cliff in the distance shouldn't be as dark as a shadow in the cliff in the foreground. I also take this opportunity to add anything that I think will help the scene. Like I added these flowers, which I had some references for in some other photos around Laguna Beach. So it wasn't that difficult for me to put them in. I just wanted to have something with a little more punch in the foreground to bring it forward. So much of the scene is depth and, and doing what I can to push the cliffs in the background further away and pull the cliffs in the foreground closer to us. And having something a little interesting, having some color, you know, a bright red, I felt would really help bring this cliff forward. Now, if you're wondering like, how do I make the decisions to alter the photo? Like you see some of the things that I did uh, in Photoshop here and you don't understand like, well, how did you know to do that? How'd you know to make the, the cliff that shade of purple? Like, how'd you know to simplify this shape and that shape? A lot of that comes from plein air painting and just observing real life. Like if you don't have the materials and stuff to plain air paint, at least like when you're outside just walking around, just take note of things. Take note of what happens to colors as they move in the distance. Take note of how much information is actually in the shadows. A helpful thing you can do sometimes is take a video of a scene and narrate over top of it, giving yourself notes on what's different from what you're seeing in your video screen to what you're seeing in real life. Another thing to do is study master landscape painters. See how they simplified a scene, the colors and values that they used. That's why I always recommend doing you know, master copies just to give yourself the muscle memory of what a good landscape painting looks like and feels like. The only way that you're gonna learn what to change in a landscape photo is seeing it done correctly. And doing master copies can help you with that. Now, since I wanted to do this for a tutorial on my Patreon page, I actually did the painting one time just on my own to give myself the opportunity to make a lot of mistakes and, and figure out and tinker around uh, with the painting, which you need to do a lot of times when you're doing a painting from a photo, you know, cause you have to make up some things and you have to adjust a lot of things and that can take a few tries. So when I filmed the tutorial, I actually used the first painting I did as the reference. Cause at that point I felt like I had changed so much from the photo. If I was using the photo as the reference, it would be a lesser reference. I think that makes sense. So the first thing I do is I get an accurate drawing. I'm trying to get an accurate drawing of just the big shapes here. Not worrying about detailed, just trying to get everything in the right place. And then the first thing that I put into the sky, cause I'm pretty confident I can get it in right without the aid of other elements of the scene yet. So once I get that sky, I can use it to help myself key in other parts of the scene. All right, now I'm not gonna talk about color in this video, but if you struggle with color mixing, I actually offer the color mixing video from my Foundations of Oil Painting course for free. I'll put a link to where you can get that in the description below. Now, when I'm doing the ocean, I'm keeping atmospheric perspective in mind, which is as things get further away from you, they get cooler, certain colors drop out. The first color to actually drop out is yellow. So I'm keeping the ocean more blue as it gets further in the distance and adding more yellow as it gets closer. And blue plus yellow gives you green. So the water up close is gonna be more green. And I probably pushed that a little more than I saw in the photo just to make this scene that much more interesting. Now, painting sand can be very tricky. It can seem a lot brighter than it really is, and dialing in the value can be tough, which is why I strategically, while I was working on the sand, put in the white water uh, in the ocean, just to kind of check myself 
to see what my sand looked like value-wise against one of the brighter values in the scene. I do this a lot. I kind of call it working easy to hard or letting the painting figure out the hard parts for me. Whenever I come across a hard part in the painting, I'll, I won't go to it right away. I'll kind of figure out areas around it to help inform me what to do in that tough area. And a lot of time, either getting your darkest dark or your lightest light can help you figure out you know, where something's gonna fall value-wise. Now, as I move to this distant cliff, another strategy that I tend to use when coming up on complex scenes like this cliff, you know, we got this cliff, there's rock, there's the bushes, there's the house and all this stuff, and it's all just kind of packed next to each other. I try and just block out the big shapes with flat color. Like here, I went in and just blocked out all the big shadow shapes first to make sure I got all of those dialed in right before I started adding detail. Now, when I do start adding detail in these bushes, the main thing that I'm trying to think about here is form and where my light source is coming from. It's very similar to painting trees. I've actually made a whole video on painting trees if you want to check that out. I'll put a link to it above right now. But in short, the main thing you want to think about when painting bushes like this is the form. You know, not don't think of them as a whole bunch of leaves. Think of them as just big mounts of clay. And there's going to be a light side and a shadowed side. And you want to correctly identify that light and shadowed side. And since I've kind of made up a lot of the shapes of these bushes, I really want to make sure I don't make them the same size and shape. That's the common problem that always happens when doing things like this is that you end up making all the bushes the same length or all the same thickness and it can look too uniform. Always keep an eye out that. Always keep an eye out on size, shape, and, and spaces between something. Like a lot of times if you know people are painting a bunch of trees, they'll, they'll space them apart like the exact same space. You want to avoid that because it draws your eye to it in a negative way. Now, when I move to this cliff in the foreground, the main thing I'm thinking about here is that it needs to look like it is in front of the cliff behind it. So I got to make sure I make the color warmer and more saturated. That's going to bring it forward more because of atmospheric perspective, that's going to make it sit in the foreground. I'm also going to allow myself to go into a little more detail here. You know, detail is just another tool you can use at your own discretion. You know, use it to enhance your paintings. Don't just put it in everywhere just because you feel like you need to have detail everywhere. Use it as a tool. Like here I'm using it to try and pull this foreground forward. I purposely didn't put detail in the background because I wanted to sit it further in the back. I'm also allowing my colors to get more saturated here, especially with these flowers. You won't find any, you know, really bright vibrant colors like this anywhere else in the scene and that's on purpose. I'm also allowing myself to use smaller shapes. Now the painting's pretty much one at this point and it's just a matter of polishing things up and putting on any final details or touch-ups. All right, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna check out the full version of this tutorial and a whole bunch of other painting tutorials, check out my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero, here telling you to go get painting.